Hello guys, my name is Farhan Hemi and today we want to discuss rectangular components in space. Well, everything around us can be easily described through vectors, whether it's wind or any directional space, so we can so define them with vectors. Today we want to discuss the rectangular components of force in space and also we have to discuss the three dimensional coordinate system. The two dimensional coordinate system is relatively easy. To locate a point P in a plane, only two numbers are necessary. So any two real numbers can locate uh, X and Y coordinates in any plane. So if we need only two or uh, two real numbers in an ordered pair, that is why it is called a two dimensional plane. Well, if we want to locate a point P in a real space, that is three dimensional coordinate system, we have to have a triple ordered pair that is A, B, C. In order to represent a point in space, we have to choose an origin O and three directed lines through O that are perpendicular to each other. These three lines are called the coordinate axis. They are labeled as x-axis, y-axis and z-axis. Well, we can draw these axes at any point, but they should be perpendicular to each other. But normally we think that x and y-axis are being horizontal and z-axis being vertical. That's the normal convention we use. In. So, we draw the orientation of these axes just like shown in the figure. That is x-axis and y-axis being on horizontal and z-axis on the vertical side where O is the origin of the coordinate axis. The direction of z-axis is determined by the right hand tool. If you curl your fingers from x to y, the thumb will point to the, towards the z-axis, positive z-axis. The three coordinate system determines the three coordinate planes. That is where x and y intercept that is called the xy plane x and uh, where x and z intercept that is called the xz plane where y and z intercept that is called the yz plane so we have three planes and three coordinates when the intercepting axis divide the space into planes we got eight parts that is called octant the space you are shown in the figure that is the first part of the octant or the foreground. Well, I know it is very confusing because most of the people find it very difficult to, uh, to visualize the 3D figures on a 2D plane. So, let's see you are sitting in a room and look at the bottom corner of the room. There is a right wall, a left wall and the floor. Let's see the left wall and the floor intercept at x-axis, the right uh, wall and the floor intercept at y-axis, where the left wall and the right wall intercept at z-axis. So then, then the points be meeting at the three, three axes is called the origin O. So the corner of the room, the, the bottom corner of the room will be your origin and the, the three axes generated from it are shown in the figure. So, according to our depiction, the wall on the left is the xz plane, the wall on the right is the yz plane and the floor is the xy plane. Also, the x-axis run along the intersection where the floor and the left wall intersect, the y-axis run along the, uh, along the floor and the right wall intersect, the z-axis run upwards, that is it pointed towards the sky where the, uh, where the intersection of the two walls happens. Well, as we speak earlier, that the three coordinate system we have uh, divided the space into eight octants. So this room, imagine this room as your first octant, and seven other rooms are the remains of the octants you have, where the three rooms are on the same floor, that is on the left side, on the right side, and on the back of the z-axis. There are the three other rooms, and the four rooms similar to these four rooms downwards. On the base room. So there you compute your A octants, that is the eight part of the octants, and they have a connected center O, which is also called the origin. So in a 3D coordinate system, if we have to locate a point P at that is at any random point in space, let's say that the A is the distance directed from the XYZ plane to P. B is the distance from the XP plane to P and C is the distance from the XY plane to P. 
Now, the P may be represented by an ordered triple pair of a real numbers that is A, B, C. We can call A, B, C as the coordinates of P, where A is the X axis coordinate, B is the Y axis coordinate, and C is the Z axis coordinate. Well, just to locate a point A, B, C, we can start from the origin. That is, we can move a units along the x-axis, b units along the y-axis and then c units along the z-axis to reach a point p. Or we can change this to by moving first in the y-axis, then in the z-axis, then in the x-axis. We can choose any orientation we like. We can move anyway. Well, in this figure you can see like how can we reach point p. That is the point P alongside has three coordinates A, B and C. But at the X axis where we can say that A is the only distance. That is the distance covered in X axis direction that is shown in the red line. Then we move from A to point Q. And then we got the coordinates A and B that is X and Y axis coordinate. But the Z axis is still zero. And if we move towards upward direction, then we got the three coordinate system that is A, B and C. And if we complete the cube, we can find the coordinates all at eight sides of the cube, where some uh, at the z axis, the other two axes are zero, that is zero, zero, c. At y axis, the other two axes are zero, that is zero, b, zero. At x axis, the y and z axis are zero, that is zero, zero. So uh, if we have to find uh, any distance at a certain axis, the other two axes will be zero. And in the space, we have to find the value of maybe two axes or three axes depending upon our point location. Well, we can also define the, uh, the perpendicular of point P at any axis as its projection. Let's say if we draw up a perpendicular from point P on the X I I plane and then we reach the point Q that is A, B and O. This is the projection of P on X, Y plane. We can uh, draw the projections of plane uh, of point P on YZ plane, that is the point R, where X axis is 0 and Z, Y axis is B and Z axis is C. This is the projection of P along YZ axis. We can have the projection of P along XZ axis, that is the point S, where the coordinates are A, 0 and C. Well, a numerical illustration can define this problem easily. Let's say we have a coordinate that is minus 4, 3, minus 5 and 3, minus 2, minus 6. So, uh, in the first figure on the left hand side, we can see that minus 4 represents A, that is the value of the distance on X axis. So, on the X axis, we go on the negative X axis 4 units, that is minus 4. Uh, and then from there, we got three positive units towards the y axis and then five negative units towards the z axis, z -axis. so we got our coordinates minus 4 3 and minus 5 downwards somewhere in the octet similarly when we talk about the other coordinate that is 3 here x axis is positive and y axis and z axis are negative so we have to move three positive units on y axis then two units in the negative direction of y axis and then six units in the negative direction of z axis then we will reach our point in space well that's enough for today and we will continue this lecture uh, on the next session thank you